first one we will talk about think about VLSI. I know it from the morning you had been listening about what is VLSI, aspects of VLSI. So I'll be covering and touching very little things on that. Uh, then we'll focus on importance of verification. See what are the languages used. Normally we are doing verification with system airlock. So we'll touch on why system airlock is being more prominent these days. Uh, then we'll see what are the basic concepts of uh, system airlock. Then there is new technology that we're working on that is UVM. Then we'll understand why we need UVM. What is the application of UVM and where the verification goes forward? Like the, what is the future scope of verification? Next step. So this is the major industry uh, subsectors that we have divided. So that is divided into two, uh, two things. That is manufacturing and related. And second is chip design. So normally calling it as uh, fab and fabless. So in manufacturing, we have three things. One is fabs. Second come as packaging. And third is AT. That is uh, testing uh, equipments. In chip designs, we normally deal in two things. One is pre-silicon and second is post-silicon. For uh, If I talk about post-silicon, we have three major branches in that. The first one is AT here as well. Second, then it's functional and then it's uh, characterization. In pre-silicon, we have front-end design, back-end design, then we have DFT and finally the EDA tools. So there is broad category like what follows in front-end and what follows in back-end. So if I talk about front-end, so that comes the architecture. Firstly, we decide the architecture that what we have to make or what is the idea behind that. Then based on that architecture and specification, we create the design. Like what kind of a design we want to develop now. Once the design has been developed, when we, the next step is to verify that. We have to verify the design. Then it comes the emulation and finally it comes the validation. So emulation, uh, like normally we in the verification we used to do simulations. But now uh, as the designs are becoming more and more complex, we are touching towards emulation as well. So emulation is kind of a extended version of FPG. You can consider that. And last is validation. Validation is something uh, once the design has been ready and we need to validate it with the uh, idea that we created at the start. Like whether it's meeting the utilization properly, bandwidth, power, performance and everything. But on the back end side, we have synthesis. Then we have floor planning. Then we have placement and routing. Uh, then come the CTS that is clock tree synthesis. Uh, then placement and routing is, uh, I mean, a major, uh, they work uh, hand in hand. Then we have timing analysis and finally the physical verification. So we deal in two aspects, the front end and the back end. Today our focus will be only on the verification side. What is the major impact in verification? Uh, we can skip this slide because from morning we had been listening about what is the roadmap, so I'll skip this. So first of all, uh, first of all, uh, this is very important, right? Why we had been seeing like a lot of designs are coming up in the market, right? Every company, like if you talk about NVIDIA, AMD, they all have their designs and intended application is also same, right? Everyone is making their processes. Everyone is making their, I mean, HPUs, GPUs, right? High performance units, sensors and everything. So if the designs are same, right? Why do we need verification? If the designs are same, it's very little bit of tweaking is needed, right? Why do we need a, uh, the verification for that? So let's understand why, what is the importance of verification. The first one is ensuring correct functionality. We just want to make sure that whatever design we are making, that should be correct in terms of functionality. Like if we are making any small change in the design, that should be verified because any small change can help here. I mean, should be verified because it can uh, cause a lot of issues. So reducing the development time, right? So if we are going ahead and verifying it and we are finding the bugs at the early stage of the uh, design cycle, then the effort can be reduced. If we are able to find and make the verification environment or aspect very, very in a handy manner, that time efficiency will also be um, increased. Like in less time, we'll be able to give the more results. Yeah, next. Enhancing design quality will make sure that whatever design we are making, that stands out in terms of performance, power and area. Now, I mean, I was talking to one of my engineers. He mentioned that is now PPA square. That is age is also being considered into that. Next. So mitigate, uh, mitigating risk. If we are verifying the designs, we are making sure that the cost that is involved in the entire process, it's not doubled. If we are able to identify the bugs at the early stage, then the, uh, uh, I mean, the risk, of, uh, uh, risk of failure is reduced. The compliance with industry standards, when we are verifying some designs, 
so every design i mean some of the designs come with comes with the compliance suit so making sure that if we are verifying this the, uh, the chances of success is increased so we have to i mean i have captured out two case studies in this uh, i mean highlighting the importance of verification over here the first one is intel pentium that is a floating point division uh, unit so there was a bug in that uh, when intel released this product uh, that is pentium f uh, i mean this uh, pentium chip there was a intended bug i mean they in the verification process they missed identifying this bug so what was the impact is like they have to call the chips again i mean in the market they were, the chips were in the market they have to call these chips again and the cost was like the estimated ex extended cost was 475 million dollars so that is the impact if we are not doing the verification properly so this is a huge impact on the cost so lesson learned so verification is must and it should be thorough and thoughtful one more case study i have that is on nvidia tegra uh, that is uh, gpu so that was having the issue with the uh, power but nvidia guys were able to manage it out before uh, tape out so uh, yes they were able to manage it out so they don't have to pay high penalty so they uh, it was nvidia was saved so again the same lesson learned that verification is entirely must and should be carry out uh, uh, i mean in a very uh, ex extensive and exhaustive manner so let's uh, see what are the programming languages which we are working on these days right normally in uh, terms of verification and designing the first one is the c language that we we all are well uh, uh, aware of so that is used in soc verification uh, embedded designs and the firmware next come the c++ language that is uh, based on the oops concept so that is used normally in uh, system modeling and the hardware verification the third comes to the verilog that is used for the designing purpose uh, all the designs that we are making these days like uh, earlier we used to have the vhdl but slowly slowly it's getting obsolete so we are working with the uh, verilog these days in uh, for designing purpose so next comes the uh, system verilog the system verilog is the language which uh, is the i mean super set of your uh, verilog so what it has the extended features what we are using in verilog but the intended purpose is for verification so making sure that we carry out entire verification with system verilog finally we have some auto, i mean uh, the scripting languages which we are using i mean earlier we used to use perl and tickle now that is being uh, taken uh, by the python so these languages helps on helps us in making sure that we are able to automate our work so it helps helps us a lot in uh, reducing our verification effort so today we will be talking uh, majorly on the system verilog and uvm the concepts that we majorly use in the verification so let's understand uh, what are the features uh, associated with system verilog and why we are using and it's very prevalent in the industry these days the first one is that uh, system verilog comes with the oops concept second is constraint randomization third is improved data types as i mentioned like it's a super i mean it's a extended version of verilog so in verilog we used to have limited data types but it has been improved a lot uh, to support the verification purposes then we have a functional coverage I, i mean i'll touch a lot of uh, most of the points here uh, in, in detail uh, in the next slides the next is assertions then and the last is synchronization processes so these are the six basic pillars of you uh, system verilog which is helping us in uh, making sure that the industry uh, continues working on the sp for the verification purpose so let's understand first is the oops concept we all are well aware of oops concept that is object oriented programming it is supported by four pillars one is inheritance second is polymorphism third is encapsulation and last is in, uh, i mean abstraction level so these four pillars helps uh, to, uh, the, give the power of oops concept let's see the uh, uh, next step let's see what are the benefits that uh, the oops concept gives us it is helps in uh, modularity uh, we can break down the structures into uh different different uh, methods and combine them un under a single class uh, then uh, with the help of inheritance our code becomes more readable whatever things we have declared already in the parent class it's not used to be in the child class so the code becomes more readable uh, then with the help of encap encapsulation this we can also provide the security right if we want to give the information to some uh, of the children and we do want to hide the information from some of the objects we can do that with the help of encapsulation uh, 
topics. Let's go next year. So yeah, so uh, this is randomization, right? So we all have been working on probability from almost last eight, right? So that's why the example of dice is there. So probability is nothing but a probability. Uh, randomization is nothing but a probability. So why do we need randomization first? And what is randomized? Randomization. So randomization means that we have to make sure that the, all the inputs in the design they can take any random value so that our design is effectively effectively verified. But in a normal days or in a normal tendency, what we do is we create a test benches that have the directed approach. I'll take the example of ALU, ALU uh, and the uh, in that the adder. So let's suppose we have an adder of 8 bit. So what values we are going to provide is A0, B0, A0, B1. But if I talk about like the 8 bit number of A and B, I have to write 256 combination of A and 256 combination of B and cross. So 256 into 256. So that the combination becomes very large and the directed approach fails here. How long we are going to verify that and in which order we should verify that. So that is the problem with the directed approach. That's why we come up with the randomization that makes sure that okay, any random values can be picked by A and any random value can be picked by B. So the effectiveness of verification uh, takes place. So any value can be taken place and that will be provided to the design and that will be verified. I have two snippets over here. The first one, the code without randomization and second course is with randomization. If you see right, that is the ALU adder example itself. So I have taken two inputs, A and B and output as sum and carry. So if I have to write, right, so I, uh, uh, without randomization, so it becomes four reds, uh, I'm supporting it to 256 and giving some values. But on the other hand, if I talk about randomization directly, packet dot randomize. And the main factor is that I have to declare these bits are rand. So it will automatically pick the random values. So you don't have to worry about, oh, A equal to zero, B equal to zero. You don't have to worry about all the things will be taken care automatically by the programming language. So this is, I mean, important. Like, so if you have to cover all the scenarios, the number of lines of the code will increase. But on the contrary, using randomization, that can be done hardly in one or two uh, straightforward code lines. Yeah, uh, hold on. So this is something very interesting, right? So a person binded by, I mean, he's controlling something. So reason is like, he seems to be unhappy. But in a concept of verification, that is more important. That is a happy approach. Why? Sometimes, let's suppose your design is there, ALU itself, and that supports very specific values, one, three, odd numbers for A and even numbers for B. How I'm going to control that? Yeah, let's go ahead. This can be controlled with the help of constraint randomization. So constraint randomization helps us in making the sure that there can be some uh, constraints applied on the inputs. So with the help of randomized constraints, we can make sure that whatever values are valid for the design, we're only targeting that, right? Yeah, so it says that uh, with the help of uh, constraints, we are able to effectively verify our designs. Yeah, uh, next question. So this is two examples I have taken. That is a code without constraints and the code with constraints. The first uh, example shows that for A, for the number A, the values of one should be four, should be greater than four. So I have to write this, this entire code to make sure that number of ones in input A should be greater than four. But on the other hand, with constraints, I can cover it in one line. So the readability increases, the controllability increases, and I mean, the reusability increases. So that is what the advantage of constraint is with us. So coverage, coverage is uh, like, it's a matrix that helps us in making sure that what kind of an input has been covered as per the design. Let's suppose, uh, yeah. So that, that helps us in understanding like, okay, these were the inputs and these inputs have been applied to the in, uh, duty or not. That helps us in, in calculating that matrix, okay, th th these were the different inputs that were there with us and we have effectively exercised those inputs. So from the coverage itself, we can understand, okay, one instead of one, three, five always coming up, we have 20, 30, 35, 33 numbers as well coming in the input. So that is the best, uh, I mean, uh, one of the best approach to cover out the verification. So for keeping in mind, we, we I mean, so I'll explain from the code. This is a coverage code for the uh, point of the ALU. So if we talk about, we're covering what are the values for A, like first is bin 0 to 50. I just want to make sure that my 0 to 50 values are covered in the input. 
Similarly for mid B, I am saying 51 to 150 should be covered. Similarly for high C, I am saying 151 to 255. So I am just making sure that it is in, uh, within the limits that I have decided. Similarly for B, and then uh, what I am saying is the cross coverages. What are the values for corresponding to A and B that have been covered? So this is the approach, one of the approach for verification, that is coverage driven verification. So next approach is assertion based uh, verification. So assertions, like with the help of assertions, we make sure that the functionality of the design is met or not. So we write some kind of uh, assertions, which make sure that if, uh, I mean, it says that if uh, operation is A, I mean, opcode is A and opcode is B, then the sum, sh sum should be A plus B. The, if, if the design is not meeting the specification, the assertion would fail. The best part of assertion is they are synthesizable. I mean, if we write the synthesizable assertions, and they can be used for other platforms as well. So, so we have talked about three, four different uh, verification methods for, uh, today. The first one is OOPS. Second one is the coverage. Third is constant randomization. And fourth is assertions. So, if you use, I mean, you can go ahead and uh, uh, use the one of these strategies to for your verification purpose. But the best approach would be if you use collectively all of them. If you use collectively all of them, then your verification becomes best. So. This was system verilog. So the problem with system verilog was that the, I mean, everyone can uh, create their test benches, but that, that test bench was not standard. So to create the standard test bench, we came up with the verification, I mean, methodology called as UVM, that is universal verification methodology. So that was adopted in 2007. Right, Nick? So, so this is important, right? UVM specific stuff has to be learned. It's a method like, a, B, C, D, E, F. So it's a method that has to be learned, but with the help of system verilog and verification knowledge, it's not a huge effort. If you understand what test bench you have to create, and if you understand the system verilog, learning UVS is not that tough. Let's go next here. Yeah. Why UVM? Right? Why industry is moving towards UVM? Right? First one is modularity and reusability. So UVM is built on SV. It has classes and objects which can be created for the, I mean, the classes that we create. So you can make your design very modular. Like, for example, today you are targeting for ALU of 8 bits. Tomorrow you want to create the ALU of 16 bits or, or 32 bits. So that can be easily uh, designed and verified with the UVM. That is reusability. Then the same test bench can be used again and again. Similarly, phasing. Phasing is more important for sync purposes. Every component knows what has to be done and what time. Then it's a reporting mechanism. It has beautiful reporting mechanism to display all the kind of messages and errors. Next. Uh, it's a, it has a factor mechanism, which is most popular. Factor mechanisms helps us to make sure that if you want to override some of the components, that can be done. It, it, you can consider it, it as an actual factor here, right? So UVM has that. Then it has a configuration class to update the uh, things on the runtime. Uh, then we have the different terminologies, like we can create separate test cases, separate sequences, and so on. So all system verilog experience is directly related with the UVM, but we aware that the verification part of language is much, much bigger than the design aspect. You need more effort in verification rather than in design. That's why we are stressing more on why do we need verification. Key elements, so uh, this is the key elements that uh, is of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, UVM. First one is what we have taken from system verilog, that is syntax, RTL part, oops, class, and interface. From UVM, we have classes and configuration concepts that we are using. Similarly, uh, on the right hand side, you see, these are all the things that are a part of UVM. So I'll just glimpse on one of the test banks that we have on the UVM. How do we create a test bench in UVM? Yeah. So this is how you build a UVM test bench. So this is DUT, that is the design. And rest, all the components are standard, which helps us in making the verification test bench. And anyone in the industry who understands UVM can go and update these things. So this, that's all I have uh, for the verification aspects. If you have any questions, please let me know.